about knitting and about crochet. My name is Maya and I'm coming to you from Western Germany. If you are new to this channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm very happy to see the comments that you leave me and also very happy to see that people are subscribing. I very much appreciate that. This is my way to connect with the fellow knitters and crafters all around the world and to share our experiences and joy in the making. Today is very, very gloomy and rainy day. And I haven't been recording for four or five weeks, uh, but uh, it seems that uh, the weather is not getting better until spring. So I just have to use as much as light possible. I have placed myself the closest to the window I could. So I hope you will be able to see um, everything, what I made and what I'm working on clearly, because I'm quite sad a little bit because uh, in this kind of weather, you are not uh, able to see uh, the colors of the garments uh, very clearly, but what can you do? We can have, we, we have what we have, we have to try our best. So uh, yes, uh, what I've been discovering, I've been discovering a lot of uh, very nice uh, knitting channels. It's amazing what people are doing uh, all over the world. And I have just keep on subscribing, subscribing, but uh, you know, I don't have uh, time to, to watch all these um, channels. But I really like when, particularly in the evening, I take my knitting and um, yeah, I just invite a fellow knitter to my to my world to share the joy of making together. And I really like, I've been inspired a lot uh, lately by so many beautiful patterns and yarns and I want to buy and have it all. I, I wish if I uh, didn't have to work, I think I would be knitting my days off until the end of my life. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I have other interests too. So uh, besides knitting, I've also discovered some beautiful, beautiful channel about everyday life uh, of people in some particular parts of the world. Like for instance, in Siberia, there's a girl who uh, shows uh, how life in Yakutia or Yakutsk is. And, um, you know, it was quite interesting for me to see how people cannot have the running water in the house because uh, the, it's so cold that uh, the pipes would uh, freeze. So what they do, they, she says they go to the river in October when it's not too cold. It's just minus 25 degrees Celsius. And they uh, are armed with these huge ice picks and they just break the ice and take these huge blocks of ice back home you know, make them uh, in, into smaller cubes and just store them in the garden. And they, if they want to water, they put those cubes in the barrel and then they melt it. And I was really impressed. I, when I saw them doing that, she and her brothers, I was saying like respect. And yes, uh, I discovered also some different things. Like for instance, I discovered by studying geography with my daughter that for the next hundred years or so, the spring is going to start not on 21st March anymore, but on 20 March. And this was quite a discovery for me, right? because when I was young, when I was studying in the school, it was always March starts on 21st, uh, spring starts on 21st March, full stop, and that's it. So yeah, it makes me uh, wonder if all my knowledge that I have so far is <laughs> so, carved in stone or not, so to say. So it makes me question a lot of things. But enough of me rambling about random stuff. I'm showing you today my first FO. If you have seen my previous episode, it was works, uh, work in progress uh, then, and I have finished it now. I have finished it at the end of October. You see, it has these nice bell sleeves, like lace-like pattern on the front and on the back it's the same and it's a free pattern by drops i also use their yarn it's this very nice soft and squishy air in the colorway sea green number 27 i mean it's if you ask me it's more blue than green you just compare it this is green let's see and this is for instance this is blue 
so yeah maybe somewhere in between and this is like sage green I don't know if, I can show if you can see it oh. well what to say about it um it's not quite a mindless pattern because you have to pay attention to follow this chart okay it maybe it's more intuitive on the sleeves but still i didn't pay attention every, because i was watching squid game and reading subtitles from the korean language and then uh, when i finished it the second i finished the sweater i posted photos on instagram etc etc and then i said oh let's try it on and when i put it on i noticed that one sleeve was like visibly it was like this let me show you it was like visibly narrower than the other one and then I saw that I made a couple of knit two togethers more than I should have. So it was not a good idea to watch uh, a foreign language series and follow uh, this lace pattern. So it's not quite mindless. But yeah, it's, it was a quick knit on 5.5 millimeter needles. I think it's US size 9. It goes up it flies off the needles it was a very very enjoyable knit and the yarn is very soft and fluffy it's a mix of i think mix of alpaca and wool let me just read the label yes yeah, 65 percent alpaca 28 percent polyamide and seven percent wool and it's actually a chain i think it's polyamide is this chain like a tube into which the fibers are blown into so it makes it very very light and airy sheds a little bit but not not too much um when i repaired this sleeve when i re-knitted it i noticed it's still na visibly narrower i mean this one i think it's no this one you see this one is bigger than the other one but does it bother me yes <laughs> it does will i do it again no I think I will just wear it uh, as it is and I really like it I enjoyed this color it is a mix of colors I don't know if it's visible in the camera or not yeah it's not visible but it has speckles of like different colors like purples and a little bit of light very very soft red yeah it's a very very nice pattern and uh, nice yarn the next finished object is uh, 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 uh. what shall I show you? I'll show you this shawl because it's on the camera. It is a quaking aspen pattern on Revelry by D. O. Key. It's a paid for pattern, and I must say, I really, really like it. The only thing is, I made a terrible mistake with my yarn choice because the pattern calls for much i mean I, I knitted on 3.5 millimeter needles and the pattern suggests five and like a double knit i think a, a heavier weight yarn and my was uh, this fingering weight sock yarn it's magic prolana i think it's 75 uh, percent wool and 25 percent polyamide and but i like the colorway i like the color it's very autumn like colors and I have a jacket which is like a dark burgundy and it goes perfectly I wore it tomorrow uh, yesterday on the Christmas market oh yeah there's a funny story what happened to us yesterday in Dusseldorf on the Christmas market I will save it for the end hopefully we will remember to tell it to you uh, I follow the pattern quite closely the only thing I have to do because I knitted on a, a tighter gauge and a smaller needles I had to do additional repeats of these garter panels garter stripes and additional repeats of on the lace and it took me uh, quite a long to finish this uh, shawl and I um, added these tassels because I like it when I wrap it around my neck, I like it to be a little bit longer so that it doesn't slide off my shoulders. And yeah, and to go with it, I have these fingerless mitts. Because you see, I the border is this purple, dark violet purple color. And what happens is uh 
I finished those uh, uh, myths uh, last year in um, in February or in March. I mean, it was February, I think. But what happened when I bind it off, I dropped a stitch or two. And then I have to wait for the whole shawl to be finished because I didn't want to cut into the yarn in order not to disturb this uh, colorway. So yeah, that was sitting for the whole summer uh, in my drawer. This is a free pattern on a Revelry. Uh, it's called uh, Pioneer Gloves by Kelly McClure, I think. And it is a ribbed pattern. The only modification I made unintentionally is that this stump here is not ribbed. I was also watching some series and didn't pay attention. But it's not visible, you know. This black yarn is some regular sock yarn. It's quite warm. I like in in uh, winter to have my fingers free because it's not too cold here. And if it gets colder, I can just you know hide them. And I like to make, I made this upper part a little bit tighter because I don't like it to flare. You know, I don't like it on fingerless mitts. I sometimes see this and I don't like it. So yeah, these are these fingerlet smiths. These were knitted on 2.25 uh, millimeter needles. And well, yeah, quite, quite quick to knit. I think I will make more of these because they are quite practical. Okay, so now let me remove the shawl. It's a little bit too warm for it now. Okay. Uh, this is my first lace pattern. I have never done the lace, these, uh, you know, la uh, lace yarn overs before, and it was quite. Oh, I put it on the wrong side. It was quite enjoyable. I like it, although it has to be, you know, knitted with care. Um, the last finished object I have are these socks. I made this in an unknown hand dyed sock base yarn. I bought it in Dortmund about five years ago on one knitting event. So if anyone recognizes this as his or her own work, please let me know. Uh, they didn't turn out the same. You see, this one is more stripy than this one. But nevertheless, I like them both. It uh, adds a bit of more interest to it. I like this section very much as well. See, I don't have sock blockers, so I just stretch them over some cardboard that I cut in the shape of socks. So you have to be resourceful because I don't need socks that often that I would need sock blockers. And these cardboard, you know, panels, um, templates are quite uh, practical if you want to give them as a gift and if you don't want to give uh, your sock blockers away as well. For last Christmas I uh, made a pair of socks uh, for my sister and then just tied the ribbon around it and it looked quite nice. These are made for my daughter. She likes them a lot. She liked the colorway um, because she said it gives her autumn or October vibes, Halloween vibes. This is, as you can see, lime green. This is a very, very dark charcoal with speckles of some purples in it. And this salmon pink, yellowish, yellowish green. Really beautiful. I knitted them on 2.25 millimeter needles, which I think is size one in US and cast it on 68 stitches, reduced by four stitches to 64 around here. And then um, I try them on. She has the same size feet like me, but a little bit narrower. So they fit perfectly. I'm going to give them today to her. I've already washed them. And yeah, this is all about my finished object. Now let's move on to works in progress. Uh, as I told you already, I like to watch series on Netflix or on, pod on podcasts by various YouTubers while I'm knitting in the evening before I go to bed. So I, that's why I like to have a piece of knitting which is as mindless as possible. So I cast it on this sweater. It's a, my own design. 
this is a provisional custom because I haven't made up my mind yet what I'm going to do about the neck if I'm going to just finish and make it a little bit lower or if I'm going to make a rib neck I made this a raglan increases a little bit wider and I don't know why I thought it's a good idea it's not that I particularly like it now that I see it how it turned out but okay it's not a big deal this is just very very simple increases like knit to the front of the loop knit to the back of the loop because I didn't want to pay attention to make one uh, right make one left because as I said I wanted to be as mindless as possible because I was watching a Chinese series and I don't speak Chinese so I have to read subtitles as, as well you see I'm going to make just wide sleeves I didn't uh, have any decreases and I'm on to the ribbing of the sleeve so yeah it's very warm and soft uh, how I made my calculations is just I put the measuring tape around my neck and uh, made a swatch so that on the 5.5 millimeter needles um, it uh, makes uh, 10 centimeters uh, with uh, 15 stitches so it turned out that I uh, need exactly 72 stitches I divided 24 for the front 24 for the back and 12 on uh, the shoulders for the sleeves and I just made increases uh, every other row and I just tried it on so that I want it a little bit wider to make it a little bit like cozier uh, and yeah that's I, I finished the body and I'm close to finishing the other sleeve it's a little bit plain maybe I will embellish it later on with something uh, or embroidery I'm not quite yet sure the yarn that I use is this drops as well alpaca silk which I thought uh, I would pair with one else uh, a different uh, yarn but I did not like it how it turned on so I just left with this yarn didn't know what to do with it it's a little bit um, uh, uh, it's uh, this uh, soft uh, pink peach color uh, brushed alpaca uh, mixed with silk I think 23% silk 77% alpaca and the other yarn is this uh, Turkish uh, blend of wool and um, acrylic which I bought a couple of years ago and I bought huge quantities of this yarn and I didn't know what to do with it because when I tried to make a sweater I didn't like it it's um it sheds you see uh, also on the ball I hate to see these little blobs these little pieces falling off it is wool uh, because I keep on finding straw in it as I'm knitting and I must say I really like it because I, I like to see a little bit of yarn history grazing on the fields but I didn't like the yarn at all because you know when you buy yarn you 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 smell it you feel it you either like the color the texture it speaks to you and this one does not speak to anything to me it's like totally dead so I had to pair it with something else and I have huge quantities of this it's not just that I have this one I think I made um, a little uh, square rug mat something I'm sitting on while I'm working but uh, I also have I think the same type of yarn uh, which uh, has a, a little bit of gray in it and I'm not sure uh, what to do with it maybe a blanket will be a nice idea I think I have one kilogram of this one I mean what can you expect it's a very cheap yarn and I think the shipping was more expensive than um, than uh, the yarn itself at that time I also bought this cotton and I made various things with this cotton I made some other yarns I think uh, I like their cotton more than wool I mean they have huge selection of wools but uh, and various blends with wool and acrylics but um, okay I, I, I would not uh, order acrylic in any case but with wool you can never know what you will get and I think they have uh, their cotton is of better quality by by what uh, I have ordered so far and made with their cotton I can uh, it's 
my my perception. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's just my perception. So this is 60% uh, wool and 40% acrylic, and this is blend of uh, alpaca and silk, and it turned out quite uh, quite uh, nice and soft, and um, I think it will be very warm. Maybe even too warm for this climate. It's rarely below zero here. It's I sometimes wish it would be very cold, sunny and snowy, but it's just gloomy, rainy and like not very cold. So yeah, the next uh, the next work in progress is crochet project. Is this crochet sweater? It's a paid for pattern. I downloaded it from, paid it and downloaded it from Revelry. It's uh, by Alaska Crochet, a young designer uh, based in Alaska. And uh, this is something my, my daughter saw either on uh, TikTok or Instagram somewhere and she liked it very much. It's this patchwork um, sweater. Uh, it's made of originally four different uh, colors. But you can choose, of course, any color combination you like and you just make a set and without giving too much away of the pattern, you just have to make a certain size of and certain number of these squares and combine them together. Uh, I used for this, I bought also drops yarn. <laughs> this is all drops today. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're not interested in hearing their designs and wools and yarns. Uh, but it's because I ordered because I have I can choose a colorway of the same type of yarn and I bought three of soft wheat this one here three different colors this is I think cookie dough I bought um, this is grizzly bear this darker brown it's actually middle brown color and this is carrot cake this is very nice very I think it would look good on me this carrot uh, although I'm not very fun uh, very very um, I don't like very much orangey colors and yeah this is very autumn uh, looking you know the only thing uh, I had trouble with with the fourth color because I ordered I couldn't find the darker brown shade on the same color palette of the same yarn uh, it was more uh, gray than brown, so uh, I bought uh, drops Puna or Puna, which is 100% alpaca, but it is. Um, just let me show you. I have a box here. Uh, it is lighter. It is thinner, so my gauge didn't turn out right with this one. So I had to combine it with different yarn, and luckily. I found a strand of holes that I had uh, from previous project. It is dark, dark gray, and it turned out quite nicely. I think I just had to change the size of the crochet hook. So yeah, these are these four colors. And I hope it will turn out well when I finish it. I'm a bit nervous about combining those crochet, um, those crochet squares because you know it's easy on this edge where you have very clear chains and you know where to put your hook in but here when it's on these sides when you are raising it up building it up it's not quite clear and I'm very much afraid that it's going to turn out sloppy so let me know if you have any good um, tutorials or info or anything on how to um, combine crochet because I'm not a very good crocheter. I just taught myself watching YouTube just a couple of years ago and thanks to Mikey from the crochet crowd because if it weren't for him I would never learn to do that. So yeah that's it from this crochet thing. I hope to finish it for Christmas and then to gift it for Christmas. And the last work in progress for today are these fingerless mitts again. This is, uh, oh, 
this is a free pattern on um, on Ravelry called Pitu Mits by Heidi Alander. Uh, it has this. Uh, this looks like a braid, but it's actually a combination of yarn overs and and knit two together. And the, the chart confused me at first because uh, it took me a while to figure it out. Because uh, when I'm having a, a chart where you have to knit two together, I like to have a decreasing stitch uh, marked uh, in a darker color to see which one uh, in the chart, uh, which stitch is uh, decreasing, is disappearing. And here it was not the case. So, but yeah, I figured it out and uh, I, I think it, they will turn out uh, well. My daughter uh, wants them as well. So maybe I, I uh, will need either a separate pair for her or I will give this one to her. This is Drops as well, Drops Flora. Um, I think it's 100% uh, wool this year. I'm not uh, quite sure, have to check it out. Not really uh, very, very much pleased with this yarn. No one. My, maybe my personal preference, but but you know when I was knitting it, and there was a white uh, piece of paper underneath, I saw that it sheds a little bit. So, but I don't like my yarn to shed these small particles of white fiber. So yeah, that's something I don't like to see in the yarn. And uh, yeah, these are knitted on uh, three millimeter needles. Just say. Okay, and now the last thing I'm showing off today are frogs. <laughs> yeah, frogs, frogs. Okay, you see, I started to knit myself a vest a year ago. This was for the last season because I was hoping we were going to get out of the lockdown and that I would need the vest to go over a shirt for the office. It has a very, very beautiful stitch. I like this stitch gives a really really nice texture uh, this is also drops pattern it's free uh, it's called back to school and what happened it's why I'm frogging it although I made the swatch and it was the perfect swatch it turned out quite quite uh, small for me you know it's too narrow and it would need to stretch a lot and it would not be looking very good and flattering on me and I must say I still have a little bit of belly here which I don't want to show off if I don't have to so I'm going to rip it all off it's made with this drops alpaca 100% alpaca it's a really really nice uh, yarn but I something else what I also don't like about the pattern it's knit on 3.3 millimeter needles and I think I will not go uh, below four millimeter needles because it takes me too much time to do. I would uh, really need to be very, very interested in the in the project to do something on such a tighter gauge. Uh, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I think this dark gray and three or four of these um, salmon pink color. Yeah, sorry, I was just checking my notes and I noticed that I forgot to say that I uh, knitted for this pattern that I'm wearing um, for this berry diamond pattern uh, size large and I used exactly as the pattern says 350 grams. So it's quite affordable. Uh, the last frog that I'm showing is um <laughs> i was not sure if i'm going to show it to you at all or not i'm quite embarrassed to show this but it is this ginormous ginormous sweater it is the pattern by vera valemaki uh, called breathing space and i already have done um, one in cotton uh, in uh, white and uh, light blue stripes and I might insert a picture if I find it uh, somewhere um, I made this already two years ago and I must say I swatched it but it also turned out a little bit large too large but this is just 
And then I noticed that I really didn't like the color of the stripes. And you see that here, when I arrived here, I think it was quite clear that I'm not going to, to finish this because I started playing with these stripes and I got quite bored, I think. Uh, and yes, uh, this is also the same ice yarn that I'm using for this uh, sweater that I'm working right now and if I'm going to need more so I know where to find it's a beautiful I normally I very very much like this um, sweater pattern by Vera and it's quite flattering but um, I made a mistake with this one so yeah it has to it has to become something else and now um, I'm going to tell you what happened to me yesterday on um, the Christmas market. Uh, well, I absolutely love German Christmas markets. There's something magical about them. The, the atmosphere, the people are all happy, well-dressed, uh, you know, eating, drinking, the smell of all these spices, the festive atmosphere. It's, it's beautiful, you know, the lights. And it really lightens up this gloomy, rainy, everyday, very depressing weather. And so we had some business in the city. So we went to Dusseldorf, or Düsseldorf, as in the German German state. And it's um, just not one Christmas market. There are several different Christmas markets in the city center, all, all around the, the different neighborhoods in the city. So we visited a couple of them, you know, tried this and that. And I parked um, in one um, uh, of the biggest department stores because they have a very large garage. And normally, uh, if you have a big car, it's very difficult to find the parking in the city or either the geese garages are quite narrow and small. I'm very uh, much afraid not to scratch the car because it used to happen to me before. So I used this garage, it's just that when we came back at 8.30, the garage was closed. I mean, totally <laughs> shut down in the dark. And what we haven't seen, when we were exiting through the door and the doors were opened, you know, we haven't seen that what was written on the doors, because when they were closed, you can clearly say it was clearly written until 20 o'clock in the evening, so it's 8 o'clock in the evening, and uh, afterwards you have to call a guy who would open it for you and you have to pay 50 euros <laughs> so yeah well, 50 euros were gone at first we did the calculation shall we take the bus train tram you know and go back tomorrow but still you would have to pay for the hours that you parked there and and it was funny because the guys who came up popping out of nowhere oh can i take my car why it's closed and we were like 50 euros please so yeah, it was quite uh, an expensive visit uh, to the Christmas market, but you know what? I didn't let this spoil my my mood. Although it's quite a lot of money if you think what you can, how much yarn you can buy for 50 euros. I mean, it's it's um, over 60 dollars. I think it's um, it's it's pricey, you know pricey but you know it's a good good lesson learned that i can't park there uh anymore in the evenings so yeah that would be all for today i have made one acquisition i must say it's the first acquisition i made for the yarn which and uh, for the pattern which hasn't been released yet uh it's a pattern by jennifer stangas it uh, features these diagonally striped branches it's not striped I mean but it's the branches that are it's very very um, Jennifer like pattern and I all ordered some Holst uh, yarn uh, mix of cotton and wool and uh, I'm waiting for this yarn to come it still hasn't arrived so I cannot show it to you but I can't wait for this pattern to be released because I've been seeing it all over uh, Ravelry um, I mean not Ravelry I think it's Instagram that I saw it and I just can't wait uh, for it to be tested and uh, you know released because it's it's really really beautiful and I still have my winter sole to knit from Jennifer I think I will pick it up in the following days when I finish 
this uh, sweater and yeah that would be all for today i hope you enjoyed this channel and let me know what you think about it in the comments have a good friday and stay well bye